Uh, totally switching gears uh, to Edutech, we have uh, No Red Ink, which is a startup focused on helping people learn grammar and writing skills. Uh, hi everyone, how you doing? So over a hundred schools were shut down this past year, uh, and the lowest score nationally is not math, it's not reading, it's the writing section, it's grammar. I'm Jeff Scheuer, and I taught high school English for eight years, and when students get their papers back, they have no idea what to do with the feedback. So they look at the red marks, and they feel guilty, and then they throw the paper out, or they lose it. Um, and so after grading 15,000 papers, I created No Red Ink to solve this problem. And it hinges on a very simple insight, which is that students learn best from their immediate social context. So we take their favorite celebrities, their personal interests, their friends from Facebook, all the stuff that they like. And we generate personalized curriculum from that. And then we leverage adaptive learning so that students can work on questions until they actually get them right. So let me show you how it works. I'm going to sign up as a student. And I need your help for this. You're going to tell me what you like. Internet may be a little slow. There we go. Uh, OK, so I need a sport. Somebody? I hear rugby. NFL. Rugby. <laughs> the kids don't like rugby. <laughs> TV and movies. Simpsons. Simpsons. Two more. Glee. 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 All right. EastEnders. All right, we'll go with those two. <laughs> Musicians. Bieber. Justin Bieber. Okay, we got three choices. Disney, superheroes, presidents. All right, we'll go with both those. And then I'm going to pull in some friends from Facebook. Maybe some of you are on there. Uh, okay. She lives in Chicago. Good enough. All right. And we're going to say that our grade is sixth grade. Because some of us probably are at the sixth grade level right now. I won't, I won't rat you out. And we're going to practice commas, okay? Yeah, like when did the Oxford comma come into uh... Yeah, you can look that up on Wikipedia. So uh, here's the thing. There's nothing about this site that's multiple choice, okay? Students can drag in punctuation. They can, they can hold on to it. They can drag in punctuation. They can click to change it. They can throw out what they don't need. They can capitalize or uncapitalize any word. This is an authentic assessment of what kids know and what they don't. So Bert Hummel studied extremely hard because he wanted to win the Scrabble competition. That looks fine to me. Wonder Woman leaned against the window, waiting for her mom to stop talking to the teacher. That also looks OK. Nelson Muntz from Simpsons loves cake and chocolate. He prefers vegetables more, however. Let's make a mistake. Let's actually pull this out and capitalize the word cake, because I like cake. It's actually going to focus us down on the problem that we're having. Um, and if we get it wrong again, a tutorial button will show up. And if we still get it wrong, it'll tell us the mistake that we made. It'll show us how to use a comma with however. And then it will generate a similar question with the same programmatic substructure so that we can practice it until we get it right. Um, so that's half the battle that students are interested while they're learning. But if we go through two more quickly, we'll see what we do with this information. Uh, hopefully, I can solve comma splice questions and drag in a couple commas. How many of you have kids? I'm curious. All right, so we got four right on the first try. We got one right on the third try. And now it generates a color-coded heat map so that we can see that whatever commas with conjunctive adverbs is, we need to practice that more. That's what a student sees, but what a teacher sees is a color-coded heat map of all students so that you can instantly get a sense, let's look at just apostrophes, of real time what's going on in your room. So you can actually see how kids are doing. Yeah. Um, so I can tell apostrophes, not a problem for my honors ninth graders last year, Whitney Young, but plural nouns, not so much. Um, so. Um, uh, about us. Basically, there's a there's this a freemium app, um, and then schools pay for a premium version of it. Um, I launched this in February, less than a year ago. I told 50 teachers. There's now 120,000 people using it. Um, I moved out from Chicago to here. We're just closing a 1.5 million dollar round, and now we're hiring the best engineers in the world. Right? Um, to uh, and really, the mission is to leverage adaptive learning and personalization to to really revolutionize the way that kids learn. And to use all this data, these papers are data gold mines. 
right? And we should be using the mistakes that kids make to actually improve the way that we teach. Um, so that's it. Thanks very much. Questions? Yes, sir. Um, so are you guys, um, first of all, uh, my PhD is in uh, competition rhetoric, and I'm quite hey, familiar with the, uh, the research about contextualized learning in relation to grammar. So this is a pretty good guess. <laughs> my, um, my, uh, my question is, uh, are you going to uh, evolve or gravitate towards a place where students will be able to submit their actual own writing? and then being able to go through and, and apply your uh, technology to that? Yeah, you're going to love what's in development. Um, I've, I've already um, had kids for over a year working on uh, improving their thesis statements, their intros, their conclusions, um, cutting fluff from papers, blending quotes into evidence. There's, there's a lot of work to do with helping kids to write better, as, as I know you know. Um, so, uh, so yeah, all of that is, is in the works. So, so I'm really curious, did, did you teach in a private school or a public school, and do you see a difference between private and public schools in the, in the uptake or receptivity in what you're doing? Yeah, so I taught eight years in public school. Um, I taught in rural school. I taught in uh, Detroit, uh, suburb of Detroit Romulus, where the airport is, and I taught at Whitney Young Magnet High School, which is where Michelle Obama went. So uh, the kids are, uh, two-thirds of them are free and reduced lunch. 10,000 apply, they take 450. So they take a bus to a train to a bus to get to school um, to, uh, to try to learn. Uh, so um, yeah, I, I think kids, kids are, and all people ubiquitously have the same types of needs, the same things that motivate them. Well, how about right? the teachers? The teachers, the receptivity amongst the teachers to what you're doing? Yeah, a, a lot of it has to, to do with technology access, right? Um, and that's the pivotal difference between three years ago and now, is that now hardware in classrooms is pervasive. Um, I would have had my own computers in, in Chicago public school, right, not a ritzy private school, uh, if I had stayed teaching this year. So it's it's much more widespread now. Uh, one more, maybe? Yeah? So do you have any data on the effectiveness of, of this method? Oh, yeah, I mean... As far as teachers are concerned and students? You, you see it. That you can share with us? You see it right away. What do you see? I think on the average apostrophe quiz that uh, 12th graders take, that you're looking at about 35% proficiency. Um, the second quiz they take after having some remediation is closer to the 75% range. That's just right away, right? Um, so, but what we have the ability to do is look at every tutorial and then see subsequently how kids do. Every question, and we can look at what is predictive of future success. And we can use all that data to keep making our engine more powerful. So is there adherence to a certain style? I'm sorry? Is there adherence to a certain style? Um, well, we're, we're deferring to MLA for now because that's, uh, you know, that's what most high school kids are, are held to. Um, but we'll, of course, do it with all, all formats. Um, so, yeah. Do you have some sort of like an NLP, natural language processing, behind this uh, engine that you have here? Or? That's our little secret. <laughs> <laughs> Love to talk to you about it. Um, just come, come find me after. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't been repeating. Uh, how how do you use it? You know what is what is your natural language programming uh, set of algorithms that, that helps power this? But I'll, I'll tell you one thing: the the hardest part to building something like this is grading fifteen thousand papers. That's the hardest part because once you've done that, um, it's very apparent where the misconceptions come from and how to build um, how to build a taxonomy that that diagnoses those types of errors and then can develop a logical progression from there. I think that's really once you know that, then the technology makes sense, right? It's easier to implement. So, do we have time for one yeah. more? Oh, okay, yeah, great. Right. So, um, over there. So, professionally, <clears throat> this could be needed within companies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, do you think you see a market for that uh, beyond schools and children? So, um, there are a billion people learning English, right? Um, so, I think we probably start there. There's 250 million kids in, in India in primary and secondary school taking English classes just as our kids are, right? Um, 300 million people in China. So um, it, this is an all over the world type of problem. Uh, I know the parents want this for the kids. People talk about corporate demand. Um, 
the virality here, the reason that this is spread so quickly, is the teachers have this burning pain. I mean, I, I don't think I had a free Memorial Day weekend for uh, a decade because I was always grading. And then just to see kids who liked me and liked themselves in English class would get the paper and go, oh, I got a B and I got some things wrong. And just, that's it, that's the end. And I, you know, the smartest thing I ever did was invest in a scanner the first time I saw a kid throw out a paper, right? I thought, if I'm going to spend all this time grading these papers, I want a copy. Um, so um, anyway, I, I think that there are a lot of different uses, but, but teachers have this, they, they know that they're wasting their time. Um, and so teachers tell everybody they know as soon as they find that. So we, we can see that very clearly. Cool. That's all we have time for. But right. are you sticking around now? I'm sticking around now. Great. Thank you very much.